Welcome back Trolling Solo, my name is Adam Smith and in today's unboxing video, this one, I'm really excited about the second this thing hit my doorstep, which was today, I started filming this unboxing as I've really been looking forward to this. This is Role Player Adventures coming from Thunderworks Games. So if you're familiar with Role Player, which a whole bunch of solo players out there are, you can play Role Player, the base game, individually on its own or with expansions that have already been released and you're able to import those characters you built through those games into role player adventures if you'd like or if you just want to pick up role player adventures on its own you can go ahead and do so and there's characters already inside this box ready to go no need to do any kind of importing from the prior game so you can mix and match if you're one of those individuals who's loved role player from a long time ago and has everything for it or if you're brand new to this you can dive right into the adventures box here and just get going. Checking out the back of the box, you're gonna see that the game plays one to four players, so you absolutely can play this thing solo, otherwise it wouldn't be on this channel. And it plays in 90 to 150 minutes, and I'm guessing for solo players, it's on the lower end of the spectrum. It states here on the back of the box, after a thousand years of peace, Dragul armies raided from the north, prompting you and every other loyal citizen of Nalos to sign up as soldiers of the King's Guard. The armies of Nalos fought long and hard against the Norse monster generals and their minions finally stemming the tide of the Dragul invasion. But new threats have arisen that jeopardize all of Eulos. A mysterious cult prepares for the return of an ancient god, the long abandoned gate at the Brazur Wall, a portal between planes rumbles with new life. Strange rifts appear in the sky, unleashing bizarre creatures into your world. Dragul invaders seek to exploit this instability to conquer Nalos. Role Player Adventures is a cooperative storytelling board game for one to four players set in the world of Ulos. The players portray a party of characters who will face challenges and make decisions that affect the unfolding story. When you first open up the box, you will find something laying on top that is just a piece of cardboard essentially taking up a little bit of space at the top of the box in order to ensure that everything is packed in here nicely and also doesn't move anywhere. But once that's removed, this is what you're going to see. And as you can see, there is a lot of components and content inside this box. This is just about half the box worth of components pulled out. There are trees of components down below in the box, which we'll look at next. So this comprised of things like storybooks, which I believe there are 12 of them, and there are numbered and also sealed completely to ensure they come to you in pristine condition. You've also got the player boards. They're also sealed up. You have the encounter booklet, which is sealed up. You have a role player adventures bag here. You've got Got a pad to keep track of your character player and as well as your character stats and you kind of have a campaign log over here again with a number of pages to keep track of things and, and multiples of those pages and then you also have tokens in the top right and on the far right if i haven't mentioned this already this here is the skill book the bag looks pretty nice, a typical cloth bag with the screen printed role player adventures on the one side. So that will be useful for organizing things. This pad here comes with many pages. I'm not sure exactly how many, but a good number. So with those smaller items out of the way, let's talk about more of the medium sized things and then get up to the large size things from that pile you saw on the table. So here, as I mentioned, you're gonna be doing a lot of campaign tracking here. You've got the campaign track itself. You've got what looks to be kind of a skull marking of some type in the top right hand corner, which I can't tell you exactly what that is yet, but it doesn't look good. The mastery track, which is broken down into attribute score limits across the row, XP areas, gold items, active things, titles, bonus bonus play, rest tokens, and then a whole bunch of favor tracks down below as well. And what you just saw prior was also a pad, so there is a number of those sheets. And of course, some of the things you can do around those if you don't want them to just disappear on you, if you plan to play a game a lot, is just laminate a couple of them, and then you'll be able to reuse them multiple times. Here we have a skill book. We're gonna go ahead and open this up, take a look at a handful of the pages. Opening up the book on the left hand side, you'll see some gorgeous looking artwork for each of these skills. So charm is one of them. And then of course you have different levels it appears like across the other rows. Not too sure hundred percent as I haven't played the game myself yet, but these are definitely different major skills in the game. So moving through these, you'll see artwork for all of them. I won't show you every single one, but they're all in alphabetical order. 
Here's a close-up look at the punch board that you'll need to punch the tokens out of. It looks like we got gold on the right and some type of resource tokens on the left. Here's a look at the player boards. There are four of them inside the game box. The one thing I really like about these things is they are recessed, which is awesome. But on top of that, if you take a look at the very top, you'll see a slit where you can actually slide the card down through the center to populate the actual board itself. And then of course you've got slots down below for your hand, discard and spent. Next up, we have a book which is all centered around encounters inside the game. Now, this absolutely runs into spoiler territory here, so I'm really not going to show you much more than this very first page here. You can see for Adventure 1 Battle at Black Lake, you've got a number of different areas here that you're going to walk through. They're going to provide skill checks and things that you need to do depending on when you run into these during gameplay. So for the purposes of not spoiling the fun of you exploring these on your own, I'll just give you this one page as a look and layout as to how this book feels. We'll also just do a really quick flip through the book. There is a ton of content in here. Flipping all the way to the back of the book, you get to about the 170 to 172 pages in total and about 169 of those is full of content. Next up, there is a ton of storybooks inside this one. You'll see Adventure 1 Battle at Black Lake. We have Terran's Trophy for Adventure number 2. Adventure 3 is Outbreak in Undercity. Eye of Eulos is Adventure number 4. Crack in Callback is Adventure 5. Bogroot Demon, Adventure 6. Ghost Eaters of the Forgotten Forest, Adventure 7. Adventure 8 is Dragons of the Sunken City. Adventure 9 is Gurlung Colossus. 10 is Above the Dreaming Sea. Adventure Finale is Gate of the Brazor Wall. And then of course you have the rule book, and we're definitely gonna look into that in a second. Side quest book here for Deathmatch at the Coliseum of Ashes. Now, just before we jump into that rule book, I want to show you a bit inside adventure book number one. I'll show you a handful of pages again, not trying to spoil anything here, but want to give you an idea as to the flow and layout of what these storybooks look like inside. So we'll ignore all the other ones for now and just focus on this one. So let's go ahead and take a look. So first thing you're going to see when you open these thing up, and of course, this is the very first adventure. You've got a welcome to role player adventures in the top left hand corner, which will talk about preparing for your first adventure, drops you right into the setup, the encounter tokens, and then your adventure begins. And then we move right into the begin section, which is broken into for this storybook, begin one and begin two, and then it heads right in. So this is generally how these books are laid out and they'll continue on through as you traverse through the storybook. Here's a look at the back of this storybook. It's worth mentioning this one clocks in at around 26 pages or so, but some of the adventure books actually go up to around 50 to 60 pages. So there's a wide variety there between about the 25 to 60 page mark throughout the different storybooks. Now let's take a look inside the rule book. Not afraid of spoilers here. We're gonna check out as many pages as possible. One thing I really like right of the gates is this doesn't look like an overly thick rule book. So that's a plus. On the left hand side, you have an overview, giving you an idea as to what's going on in the world that you're about to get involved with, your overall objective and an important note. And then it lists into your components. You'll see a full component breakdown, which will do a much better job than what I did moments ago over the character sheet, the party journal, and the adventure map. So we have yet to see those, but they are up next. You then move into the campaign setup on the left hand side and as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, importing characters. A very important aspect, especially for those that are really into the original base game of role player as well as the expansions that were released and content that was released around that game. Being able to bring those characters that you love, that you've built up, into the world of role player adventures. And from that point on, you're moving into the gameplay for Role Player Adventures, which has the adventure set up, the key concepts you need to know. And skipping ahead just a few pages, this is the general flow of what the rulebook looks like in terms of how it's laid out. So you have areas here talking about skill checks, for example, shows iconography and examples, also has some illustrations there to ensure that you understand. Flipping even further towards the back of the book, we have advancement sections, how to save your campaign progress. 
You're able to add and remove players, and it tells you exactly how to do so. Dealing with familiars, legendary mode, which is an option in this one, and some additional notes. At this point, you've gone through the meat of the rulebook, so that's pretty awesome to know that you've reached around page 21 to 22, and you're now just into references and icon glossaries near the end of this rulebook. So if you take away those two or three pages at the beginning, two or three pages at the end, you're looking at like a 15 to 17 page rulebook to get this game to the table and played. And I can tell you right now that for a game this size is pretty awesome. Now, it wouldn't be an adventure without some extremely cool looking maps to actually traverse throughout the land. I'm going to show you a number of these, and they have illustrations and map illustrations on both sides. And I gotta say, they look absolutely awesome. Some of the maps are horizontal and others are vertical. And as you can already tell quite easily, the illustrations for the maps themselves and the locations they depict, everything here looks like it's going to be a big time winner for solo gamers just in terms of the immersion level that these maps offer to really pull you into the experience as if you're really there exploring these locations as you traverse through all of these different storybooks. I'm already really impressed with just the style and the look and feel and the vibrancy of these maps. Now let's go through the remainder of the maps inside the box. With those out of the way, we'll now check the component trays that come inside the game, which I already really like because I can tell things are going to be nice and neatly organized. We have one that sits right on top and then underneath there are more. Here's a look at three of the column trays that are inside the box. The other one is sitting on top is just off the screen at the moment. Underneath of them, don't forget to find something labeled as a secret. Just make sure you do not open this. Only do so when instructed to by a storybook. Now this first tray is pretty straightforward. You're gonna have a bunch of translucent cubes here in white. You've got some in blue. You've also got some black and green cubes as well as some tokens in a bag. And again, another tray to organize all these things in. Opening up the tray on the left, there's some dice, and here's an up-close look at those dice. These ones look absolutely awesome. And I'm going to grab some of the regular D6s as well. Here's an example of some of the regular D6s you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner. There is a number of different colors, of course. This is Role Player. Up here in the top of the tray, we have what looks to be a whole bunch of enemies. And there might even be some hero cards. There's also some reference cards mixed in. Let's open these up and take a look. Yes, indeed, this deck is full of enemies. I won't be able to show you every single one of them, but I'll just kind of break the deck up and show you a handful of them as I go through. The artwork as well is really, really good. Doing my best here to not have my thumb sitting right on top of it, but there is a ton of cards in this deck. It's ridiculous how many enemies there are. And then, of course, at the very, very back, you have four reference cards. This will break down combat on one side, flipping it over to the other side, skill checks. Now, in the center column here, we have a number of decks I am not going to open up as it depicts right on the front of these. It tells you to stop, so you do not want to open these packs up at the very beginning of the game and start shuffling through them and basically looking at them. It says right on the front, don't shuffle the deck and don't even open it until a storybook instructs you to do so. So we'll be ignoring that entire center column. We'll move over to the right. Inside of that tray, there is a miniature. I'll give you a quick rotation of it so you can see it from all angles. Inside of this tray, you'll see a number of sealed decks. Now, these ones do not have that red card on top telling you not to go through them. So because of this, I can actually show some of these on camera. So we're going to open up some of these decks and take a look through them.
So after going through all of those cards, I was able to actually check out without worrying about spoilers. The one thing I really liked as I opened up the packs was that each of the different compartments inside of this tray over here for these decks uh, divvies up the decks based on the type of card. So not only is it giving you slots to actually put them in, it's labeling them at the bottom of the insert. So it's really easy to sort things out. It's also worth mentioning that there was a small deck of cards in the left column tray at the very top, which I missed the original time around. So I'll give you a quick look at those and maybe not show you every single card, but there is a whole bunch of cards that can modify things inside the game. It's also worth mentioning that there is an expansion for role player adventures that came out as part of the campaign. This one right here, I'm going to show you a look at the back of the box only just to give you an idea as to what this expansion adds in, in case you're interested. From the back of the box, you can see that this expansion for role player adventures is going to judge each character in your party as they make personal choices that are woven through the storyline of your campaign. You're going to uncover your backstory and choose your alignment inside of this expansion. So adding even more facets to what's in the core box already. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this unboxing for Role Player Adventures from Thunderworks Games. Again, for those of you waiting for the Kickstarter fulfillment to complete, I hope this video helps you get a good idea as to what you can expect to find inside the box. If you're someone who missed the campaign and you're eyeing going after this thing after the campaign, then you'll know that the majority of what is offered, if not everything, from prior Role Player campaigns have been made available on the Thunderworks Games store so you have the opportunity to at least get things there and you'll likely be able to find things elsewhere in the near future thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments below what you thought about what you saw here i'd love to hear your feedback and as always keep on rolling solo